Today we're going to go with some classic 4x4s on one of Moab's toughest trails, Rusty Nail. Then we're going to exit out through the Golden Spike and Gold Bar Rim Trails. Before you get to the Rusty Nail, kind of a warm up spot is this step right here. It's just big enough for our little jeeps that you kind of have to take it one tire at a time. Uh -oh. I'll try and tell you about the different rigs as we go through the video. The driver. That turned into a turning to it. There you go. That's, that, once you're up, stay at the end of the, your back tires go out down the After that warm up, you turn off on the rusty nail trail itself. This is the first series of steps and obstacles you come to. This is Jesse Combs in his World War II MB. He calls Brutus. Here's Alan Kohler in his CJ3A thumper. Here's our friend Ryan Malik and his awesome platy. This Tim Cooper in his Series 1 Land Rover. This is a Series 1 88 inch Rover. Tim calls his truck the penalty box. Billy Douglas and his tricked out CJ3A. I'm not sure if Billy has a name for this. We always just call it Billy's G. Peter Bowlers is driving this really nice CJ5. Bringing up the rear is Brian Evans and what sort of looks like a CJ3A with great big tires and all kinds of different modifications. It's an awesome rig. He calls it Blueberry. Are you only making Here's Jeff Petrovich uh, in well, his uh, MB Bam Bam. He's talking about his X98 transfer case gears that he makes for the, the D18 transfer drive. cases. Um, right now, what? Huh? Well, if I would have to pay someone to cut it with a single cutter, you can't hob it. You have to cut it with a dividing head and a single cutter. Because if you turn the hob on the angle it needs to be, the, this outside of the hob will be getting into the bowl. This is the first really big obstacle on Rusty Nail. It's called Riff Raff. Well, you have to approach it in an angle. This is me and my an 48 CJ2A Grandpa's Jeep. 
I tried to put tires on it, but that undercut was too much for me. I went to the bypass. The bypass is no gimme. Actually, it's two pretty good ledges. So you have to climb up. I miss on this one where I should have had my tires a little more, more to the right. MB Bam Bam. Once again, this is the bypass to the riffraff obstacle. Good job, Tim. While we were messing around on the bypass, Brian came up with Blueberry and climbed up the riffraff obstacle. His big tires made short work of that undercut and we couldn't get up. couple others there may have been some strategic rock stacking and clever camera angles here oh that was too easy I can't believe how easily that thing did that all right well After riffraff, you come up to the next big obstacle. It's right there. It's called the wall. And this is me kind of struggling even to get a tire on it. You can see uh, Brian's blueberry is already at the top of the wall. We sent him up first. He was the only one of our group that managed to climb it without help. We sent him up first so he could turn around and run his winch line out. Once it got me hooked up to the winch line, it was still a bit of a wild ride. Here's Dave Delight taking his turn on the string.
with Alan, we rigged the soft shackle incorrectly and it pulled loose. Luckily the rope just dropped down. We got it rigged up right and pulled so hard, Alan's spring hanger got hung up on one of the rocks and it actually pulled the spring hanger right off the frame. I'll show you some repairs here in a minute on that. Missy tried a little different line, <laughs> see if you could drive it. Then he took a winch as well. Here we are with that. There's the spring hanger that's broken on Allen's 3A. The other side actually was cracked too, so we did a double repair here. We rigged up a winch from a Jeep behind with the snatch block on the front axle back to the back axle in order to pull that axle forward oh, and man. straighten out that spring hanger the way it should be. <laughs> Look at that. That's wonderful. Do we need to clean that up with a die grinder first before we went up? I've got a grinder. I can, Let's, hey, might, loosen it up just a little bit. We get a gap there, we clean all that up. Okay, yeah. stop. What's that? hanger was kind of pulled back into place where it needed to be. They busted out the grinder and cleaned it up. Just a little closer look at the rigging. There also was another line to a, a Jeep in front, so when the Jeep behind pulled, the Allen's Jeep wouldn't move. There's Dave Delight over there working on the other side kind of a pit crew operation here. Dave, what are we doing? Well, we're going to weld. Jeff's going to weld. I'm protecting wires. We tear off the spring, yeah. spring melt. Oh, it was broke here and that one was totally tore down. I got once everything was all cleaned up and set, Jeff busted out his welding kit where he uses two 12 volt batteries and a stick welder to weld on the trail. Here he is welding up the other side. And off we go. This uh, spot right here is just a little bit off camber and one tire comes down before the others. And I get real nervous in spots like this because I've rolled clear over on my top before on off camber steps like this. Next up is the obstacle called no left turn. That's too much. Yeah. This is a tri tricky obstacle because you have to drive down a wall and then across this wedge. And our little Jeeps are just narrow enough that we almost slip down in there if we're not real careful. In fact, later on you'll see, you'll see how some of us do get wedged down in there a little tighter than we should. This guy. This is me coming down first. Better? Get out in the light. Okay. You gotta climb the wall a little bit, Stan. Okay. 
real good, real good. I'm gonna give you a little extra bonus coverage on my descent of this obstacle, just so you can see what we're up against. That big canyon on the left is why it's called no left turn, because you do not want to go over to the left. It's a long drop. Let me give you one more view. Jesse kind of gets a nice shot from behind. Two, two. Okay, I gotta stay on that ledge. And I can barely see you, Billy. Get out in the light. We found that one of the main things you need to do on this obstacle is make sure that your passenger rear tire stays up on that wall that's kind of a shelf there. You need to stay up on that. If you slide off of it, then that ends up in a really tight spot. You'll see later where we made a couple of mistakes. Instead of like that. I actually think that's a pretty good, really literally just follow the black marks. Real easy, Dave. Where do I gotta be? Right there, real easy though. What what It's just a matter of inches between success and failure right here. Looks like he's going to be fine. And then that driver's tire drops off. Tried to back him out, couldn't back out. He needs those X98 transfer case gears. I mean, he, the only thing that's holding him up is that bearing on his axle. So brought another Jeep up behind and tried to winch him out from behind. He still was wedged so tight, couldn't get him out.
eventually we brought another Jeep up top and brought a line down over the roll bar, pulled them up from the side. Then from the back, working together, got him out. By this time I kind of parked my Jeep and came back and took over as the main spotter, which may have been a mistake. But for this one we did okay. Jesse, he'd been eyeing this up and he decided to take a different line. Push you off that, Jesse? I don't want to be any more driver if I can help it. Okay, well, you're right on the corner of that. So if you, if you stay right where you're at, you'll be all right. You want me to push you off that, Jess? Yeah, can I get a couple pushes? From the front where I was, I couldn't see how close Jesse was to that rock on his side. So a few of the guys ran up and just muscled him up over that rock so he didn't scrape up the side of his Jeep. New, new paint job and all. But anyway, he decided not to go through the wedge. He wanted to come down on that big flat rock. Which seems logical at first, but when you look at it from above, which I'll show you in a minute, it's really, really close to the edge. Again, here's a top view as the guys push him up over that rock. And you can see how that big flat rock is canted to the left towards the canyon. But Jesse's built a little different than some of us. That self-preservation fear gene is not quite as prevalent in him. keep showing multiple shots of some of these just because it's hard to get a real idea from the two-dimensional camera view so you can see how the angle is right here how it's dumping him over
This is probably my worst spotting job. Got my friend Jeff into quite a pickle right here. I was concentrating too closely on the front wheels and I wasn't paying attention to what was happening with the rear wheels. So that rear wheel came off the wall and then he dropped down and got really wedged in time. So he rigged up the winch from Jesse, pulled him out. Jesse's winching. He was tipped over enough that his engine started dumping oil in on top of the piston. Made a big smoke show. Free. Is even more dramatic from the back. Jeff's the kind of guy that doesn't like to be defeated by something, so he turned around and drove back up the obstacle. And I think we were also gobsmacked that none of us got our phones out to take a picture of it. But here he is back at the top, ready to take it again. Still clearing the smoke out of the cylinders a little bit. For some reason, we really had a hard time uh, keeping his rear tire up on that wall. Eventually we made a decision to take him down the flat rock line that Jesse had taken.
So after making mistakes with two different Jeeps, we kind of figured out what we needed to do. I wanted to get everyone else's descent of this obstacle in the video, but I've sped it up to actually four, t four times the normal speed, just for time's sake. Tim's Land Rover is a little different size and shape than the rest of us. I really didn't want to get him scraped up. And he, I think he would have been fine here as his front locker wasn't engaged and it kind of jammed him up on that rock and spun him around a little bit and got off balance. We had to get a bunch of guys on there and pull him down, which worked fine. I also was worried about Peter and this nice CJ5. Didn't want to scrape him up. It's really close there, but he came out unscathed. <laughs> After no left turn, you come to this other step that you have to take it kind of an angle. Once again, it feels really terrible. It doesn't look that bad from this angle, but when you're sitting in the seat, it feels really terrible. Getting up to that step is a little bit of a tricky spot. Peter bounced around a little bit getting up there. Once again, I sped the film up a little bit, just to, for time's sake. Coming up to kind of the last obstacle on the Rusty Nail Trail, I'm up there in front. Um, this one is called, there's a sign there that says, it's harder than it looks. hard because it's kind of a double whammy where you get both tires in a notch at the same time. Yeah. Jeff and Bam Bam take a different line, the one tire at a time line. 
Jeff has his special X98 gear set in his transfer case that he makes himself and sells that are super low gears. I don't know what the number is, but I can tell you. Once you get up to the top of Rusty Nail, it intersects with the Golden Spike Trail and then onto the Gold Bar Rim Trail. I'm not exactly sure where the end of one is and the other one begins, but for this next little while, it's mostly uh, Jeff's dash cam following me along. I included a lot of this just because I love this trail so much. It has so many fun ledges and steps to climb and descend and also the scenery to me is so amazing and awesome. I did speed it up to a double, double time on the film for time's sake but I, I wanted to include a lot of this just so you see what this Golden Spike and Gold Bar Rim trails are really like.
I really love this canyon that the trail goes along right here. fairly famous obstacle. It's the Gold Bar Rim Waterfall. First time Jeff and I came to Moab, we drove up to the top of this obstacle and looked at it and we couldn't believe that people actually drove the thing. Now it's a fairly routine drive for us. It really gets a little sideways here. And his Jeep is tricked out with cutting brakes. So he uses his cutting brake. Can you cutting brake yourself over? There you go. That's nice.
know, I just heard a bang, I didn't know what it was. You know, the first year we came here, we struggled like crazy and this stuff. This is Brian and Blueberry trying an optional obstacle. I like watching Brian. He kind of pokes and probes and tries things out. He doesn't have any spotter going here at all. His dad's watching him just to make sure he doesn't get in trouble, but he doesn't say much. And he just tests it and tries it and feels it till eventually he finds the spot he wants. getting towards the end of the trail and the end of the video but uh, Jeff got in behind Dave on this last part if you look closely at the back of Dave's Jeep you can see he's kind of dog walking or crab walking we hadn't noticed up to this time but he had broken the center pins in his rear leaf springs and that rear axle is starting to move around a bit back there and cause him to go sideways when he's driving. We'll stop here in a minute and figure it out. Move the axle around and get him to a point where he can get back to camp where he took it apart and fixed it. Turn out and get on the Gemini Bridges Road and pass under the Goonie Bird Rock. It's an old Moab Jeepers tradition. As you pass under the Goonie Bird, for good luck, drive your rig up on the Goonie Bird's toes. And that's what Jesse does here with Brutus, his MB. For good luck. This video ended up being pretty long. If you stuck with us this far, thank you so much. Appreciate you watching.